POTS, P-O-T-S, that's Postural Orthostatic Tachycardic Syndrome. This is a syndrome that you guys have asked me to talk about and for good reasons. It can be really, really tough for patients who have it, and it can encompass a lot of different symptoms. And likewise, on the doctor's side, sometimes it can take a while or can be a little bit difficult to diagnose. So I'm going to tell you what it is as much as I can in a few minutes. I'm also going to give you symptoms and also the treatments that we have available. Guys, I'm Dr. Jen Cardle. Let's just start right in. So I want to give you like a 50,000 foot overview. First of all, POTS is a condition that affects blood flow and it, for a number of reasons, which I'll get into. Um, but some of the main hallmark symptoms that people with POTS have is that when they go from a sitting or reclining position to a standing position, they tend to have symptoms such as lightheadedness, fainting, and an increase in their heart rate, okay? That is sort of a hallmark symptom of POTS. And by the way, those symptoms tend to improve, go away when they go ahead and sit down. Now, there can be other symptoms too, and many people have lots of other symptoms. These other symptoms can range from uh, dizziness to uh, fatigue to fainting, as I mentioned, nausea and vomiting, belly pain, uh, extreme fatigue, again, saying that again, blurry vision, shaking or tremors, even headache or insomnia. You see that this is a condition that sometimes can encompass other symptoms, but that going from sitting to standing and having lightheadedness, a fainting feeling, increase in heart rate, those uh, are definitely hallmarks. Now. Um, this is a condition, as I mentioned, that affects circulation, okay? It's, it's an orthostatic intolerance, meaning that people really can't tolerate going from sitting and lying to standing. Now, this involves a number of things. Why does this happen, uh, you may be saying? Well, it's a combination of the autonomic uh, nervous system being involved. The autonomic nervous system is a system that basically sort of controls the vital uh, bodily functions, but then also the sympathetic nervous system. Now, this is our fight or flight system. This is the one where if we see a tiger. It's the system in our body that tells us, hey, Jen, you need to run. So it's a little bit of an imbalance uh, of those two systems uh, as well as other things. Now, everybody who has POTS has, has a little bit different version of this, right? POTS is a little bit different for everyone. Um, and one of the things that happens is normally in our bodies, right, generally the heart rate and the blood pressure work together to keep our blood flowing um, sort of at a healthy rate uh, and in a healthy way, a healthy pace, no matter what position we're in, right? That's one of the things that our, our heart rate and blood pressure does is it keeps us sort of regulated no matter if we're sitting, standing, or lying. But in people who have POTS, that does not happen so well. They're not able to coordinate their blood vessels with heart rate so well, and thus the blood pressure is not often kept stable. And that causes problems, and that contributes to this overall syndrome of POTS, or rather overall condition of POTS. Now, there are different types of POTS, okay, different sort of versions, variations. It typically affects women uh, between the ages of 13 to 50 years old, and one to three million people in the United States have it. So it's a lot of people. Well, you say, why does POTS even come up? Why does it happen? Well, oftentimes this may happen after a virus or an infection or some sort of major illness or trauma. It's been noted to happen in people who have mono, mononucleosis, okay? Um, head injuries as well, uh, even pregnancy can sort of trigger uh, POTS, which I think is very, very important. It also tends to um, happen in people with autoimmune diseases, autoimmune diseases such as Sjogren's and celiac disease. We see a little bit more of this in those with autoimmune disease. I want to know, by the way, if you have POTS, um, uh, if you feel or if you've been told it's been connected to any of these underlying conditions that I've been mentioning or any illness, things like that. Now, again, I'm just giving you the 50,000 foot overview of POTS, right? There's a lot more to talk about and I'll probably do more videos on it, but I wanted to give you a little overview of treatment. There are treatments. There's no cure for this uh, condition, but there are treatments, okay? There are medications that we can use to help treat POTS. Um, oftentimes we use compression hose to help, uh, blood pressure checks, cardiac rehab. Uh, cardiac rehab can be very important and helpful for people with POTS as well as other conditions. Uh, changes with nutrition and diet. Some people have to actually eat more salt and drink more fluids uh, to basically kind of keep up their stamina. So it's really important to keep this in mind. Also, uh, it's important to see your specialist. And by the way, the increased salt and water only do that if your doctor says you should okay and gives you that advice um, but also sleep and light exercise can be very helpful as well this is really something where your doctor needs to help guide your treatment plan um, uh, this needs to be a comprehensively treated condition let me know if this is a condition that you have a condition that you're being treated for and if it's been associated with any other conditions for you uh, remember you can live a happy healthy productive life with pots make sure you're working with your doctors 
Remember, you can live a happy, healthy, and productive life with POTS. You want to make sure you're working with your doctors and getting proper treatments. That's very important. Let me know what you think in the, in the, in the comments. I, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm Dr. Jen. Please uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the little bell for updates. Guys, I'm Dr. Jen. I'll see you soon.